Joining us now for more is Dr. Leah Kroll, Assistant Professor of Neurology at Temple University. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. It, first, wanted to start out with your reaction to this announcement by Neuralink. Thanks for having me, Lindsay. My reaction is one of hope and excitement. I mean, we have years before this pans out fully, but we're talking about having a medical miracle potentially within our grasp in the future. And you're a neurologist. In layman terms here, in theory, how does all this work? Yes, okay. So the way this works is that Neuralink has designed a device that works like an electrode or a specialized sensor. And that device is implanted into the brain of someone who is neurologically impaired. Um, and what that device does is it reads the electrical signals that our brain cells are sending each other constantly. And ultimately, those signals are translated into action outside of the body. So in the case of Neuralink, those signals are being translated into the ability to control a computer or a phone. And talk about potential dangers here. Yeah, well, the earliest danger that we think about is just complications from the procedure. Look, no matter how small the device is, brain surgery is brain surgery. Um, and of course, we take that very, very seriously. Um, beyond those initial safety concerns about you know the device itself, it becomes a question of how well does this work and does it put anything in jeopardy? Is it going to be vulnerable to a hacker, for example? Are the electrical signals going to be misfired, misinterpreted? Things like that will really need to be worked out before we're ready to roll this out to the masses. Would you say, though, looking at this now, the benefits outweigh the potential risks? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, I need more information. We're, we're starting with the first human clinical trial here for Neuralink, so I can't say for sure that the benefits definitely outweigh the risks for everyone. Um, but what I can tell you is that when somebody loses a neurologic function for whatever reason, the idea that we would be able to give it back to them is so huge, so groundbreaking, and so meaningful. Um, it's hard to imagine you know, anything more beneficial for those patients. I, I truly cannot express um, how much it would mean to them. And, and so I'm really rooting for this, and I think all neurologists are. And when you say someone who would lose neurologic function, who is a primary candidate for this type of technology? Right now, Neuralink is focusing on people who are paralyzed. That could be from a brain injury, a stroke, a spinal cord injury. Um, other companies that are researching brain machine interfaces are focusing more on people who have lost language capabilities. So there's a lot of different avenues that this can take. And talk about the timeline from now until the masses might be able to receive something like this. We're talking years. Uh, the Neuralink trial is set to go on for six years, um, and so we'll see where we're at after that. But this is just the first trial. So I think we're talking about the foreseeable future. We're talking about within my lifetime as a physician, probably being able to use something like this to treat patients, but we're still years away. It really all is so fascinating and happening so fast. Dr. Leah Kroll, we thank you so much for your time and insight. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.